Hey Grace Kids leaders, my name is Jelana Krieger and I am the Grace Kids Central Lead within Grace Church. And today's hot topic of what we're gonna focus on is bringing the Bible to life within Grace Church, within Discovery Land and what that looks like. So in the email that I'm sending out, I have two links on there of some great articles that give you some ideas of ways to bring the Bible to life within your classroom. One of the things that they talk about is creative application. Sometimes we can be information dumpers and not create opportunity for application where the kids walk away and have something to take tangibly take with them, um, a question, a statement, a simple thing that they're going to remember. So that's one thing. And the second article is talking about how do we bring the entire Bible to life and why is that important and how much our kids truly understand that. And so that also gives some creative ideas. But what does that look like within our context? So in these short few minutes, I'm going to give you a couple of the tools that we have. But in addition to that, just some encouragement of some ways that you can think through and pray through as you prepare. So I want you to start by thinking through who was your favorite teacher growing up as a kid? Who was that person and why? It could have been within your school, maybe within your um, church. There was a teacher that just made a difference in your life. Who was it for you? For me, my second grade teacher, Mr. Chamberlain, was one of the people that made an imprint in my life. And why? You know, it's funny. I was thinking about it. I can't remember one thing he taught me. I don't remember one nugget or what we focused on in math in, um, in school in second grade, but I can tell you that he made me a new student to Colebrook Elementary School feel welcome. He saw me, he played basketball, and so he had nicknames for me, JJ. Um, he involved me within the lessons that he was teaching on the playground. I remember him encouraging me. And as a male teacher, that was something unique. But then he also took the time to invest in me. He asked questions. He involved my parents. And Mr. C just made me feel loved and welcomed. And so I realized that sometimes we can get, and I can as well, get so focused on the content that we are providing them because the truth is this word of God is the most important information they will ever receive. But we don't just want them to hear the truth and know the truth. We want them to live the truth. And so if that's the truth, if that's what our goal is, then we need to prayerfully approach that in a very careful way. Um, we've been talking a lot about biblical worldview. So within our curriculum, the Discovery Land curriculum, they go through the Bible every three years. And so if they start in, as a two-year-old going through scripture and going through Discovery Land, they're going to go through this curriculum three times from two through fifth grade. They're gonna go through the Bible three times. And that's a big deal. That's a lot of content to receive. But our goal is that they are passing the baton and you as leaders are passing the baton from one age to the next where they're not just continuing to receive it, they're applying it in their lives and they're able to use that. So by fifth grade, they're able to lead a friend to Christ, not just know what the wordless book is and not just learn what the gospel is and how um, what the colors mean. There are different foundational blocks that they're learning. And so when you are thinking through, how do I prepare my week? I wanna encourage you to do three things. On Monday or Tuesday, I want you to take your curriculum and I want you to read through the scripture and pray. So at the top of your lesson plan, each week, there's a box and it has the no think, do, feel. That's the biblical worldview that we're focusing on. No think, do, feel. And then at the top, it has the scripture. Read through that scripture and just pray. Ask God to teach you something new about himself and about the word um, that you are reading through. Don't do anything else that day. The next day, so on Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, 
read through the lesson plan for the week and ask God to reveal something to you. Maybe you learned something new and how they pared it down. Maybe um, you recognized some of the key words that they focused on within the curriculum. Remember, the curriculum is a roadmap, a guide that you can use as a tool to bring it to life. It gives creative ideas in there, all of that. But just read through and again, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you as you're thinking through your students. Then the third day, so Wednesday or Thursday, read through it again. And then make notes. What are ways that you can bring it to life? I have been so guilty of this myself where I can read through the lesson plan and they give some ideas and I'm like, okay, we only have a short amount of time. We're going to do this and we're going to read through and go. But then I've gone home and I've thought, who are the kids that I was able to intentionally ask questions to? What are ways that I involved the kids? Did they spend those 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes within that lesson time? Did they um, spend that listening to me or did they spend that engaging with the word of God that I was bringing to life? So for this lesson, for example, for the September 22nd lesson, we're talking about how King Saul um, tries to kill David. And there um, for elementary, the think right verse is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So our goal is focusing on trust. For a preschool, it's also a DL top 12 verse, Romans 3.23. And so the focus is of um, we've all fall for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. The do right for both groups. So this is important. Preschool and elementary children are hearing the same do right point every single week so that when they're going home, they're able to have that conversation with their parents. And it's the same thing. So the focus is I will patiently trust God when I have problems. Patience is the focus of the Discover Time this weekend, where the application out of that is we are practicing patience. I don't know about you, but a lot of us, my children, are learning patience in school. They're learning, and me daily, I'm learning what it looks like to trust God and be patient on His timing. Not my timing, but God's timing. And so the creative ideas that are in the lesson, so I'm specifically thinking of elementary right now, are to involve the kids in stepping into that scene. So when you're doing that, as they're entering, they should be entering that classroom from their discover time, stepping into something that is totally different. It's not just a classroom setting where they're gonna sit and learn. Maybe you've created and transformed your classroom into a cave. Maybe you have wigs that are sitting out and you are inviting them. They don't know yet, but you're inviting them to participate and bringing it to life. So somebody's going to be King Saul. Somebody's going to be David. Um, maybe you're inviting them. You have different pictures and it's a scavenger hunt that they're on the search for what is next. Maybe you draw on a whiteboard and you have a comic strip scene where you fill in the blank and maybe have an artist within your class um, fill in the next comic strip within that time. Whatever it is, encourage them to participate in that. We don't want them to just be sitting there receiving all of the information we want them to be able to tangibly do something with it. Now, the discover or the tracker's treasures that they receive, whether tracker junior in preschool or tracker's treasure in elementary, every time they receive that, the questions in their tracker's treasure are the same questions that are in your lesson plan, uh, at the end of your lesson plan. And so when you review with them, prepare them and say, hey, test your parents as you're leaving or... Um, I mean, teach your parents something new. I've been encouraging my own children when they're leaving. I'm like, hey, teach mommy something new that I might not know about King Saul or King David this week. Um, you, you're learning about friendship. Teach me about that. What is a What makes a good friend? And what makes a good friend who trusts Jesus? And so think of questions that you can ask your kids as they're leaving that is a good baton passing between you as the teacher and the parents. Um, because the reality is 
parents are with their kids maybe 3,000 hours a year. You're with the kids maybe, maybe 40 hours a year, but most of the time more like 20 or 10 if they're only coming eight to 10 times a year. And so what are we doing with the short amount of time we have our kids? You are making a difference. And we just wanna encourage you today to really creatively and prayerfully seek through ways that you can bring the Bible to life. Do not read script for script. Now, let me, let me tell you this. Opening up your Bible with the kids is a very special thing. It's really important to be able to do that. But this weekend, we're focusing on five different chapters within First and Second Samuel. You're not going to read through all of that. Focus on a nugget and then paraphrase. Make sure that what you're speaking is truth. And if you don't know the answer, don't pretend to know it. Tell your kids, hey, let's search it for next week. When I lived in California, one of the fun things that we did is we did dollar nuggets. And so we focused on trying to stump the kids each week with some random fact about um, the scripture that we were going to be reading about. And it could have been the place that we were studying. It could have been a did you know fact about King Saul or King David. And if they knew it, they got the dollar bill. And it was just so much fun because the kids came anticipating learning something new. So as you prayerfully bring it to life, start off by praying and asking God to teach you something new about it. And then get to the place where you are challenging your kids to own it because they're only with you for a short amount of time, but you want to bring it to life where they want to seek God's word the rest of their lives. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this, and we just are so excited to see what you're going to do um, with God leading you this year. Have a great year.